One of the most commonly abused protocol is RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. In fact, according to Sophos, RDP abuse was present in 90% of ransomware breaches back in 2023. And I don't see that going away anytime soon. Welcome to day 15 of the 30 day my D for SOC analyst challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along with this challenge, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. In this video, you'll learn more about what RDP is, why people use it, how attackers abuse RDP, how you can find endpoints that have RDP exposed to the internet, and finally, what you can do to protect yourself. To start, let's go over what RDP aka Remote Desktop Protocol is. Based on Microsoft's official documentation, Remote Desktop Protocol is used for communication between the terminal server and the terminal server client. This protocol works within TCP and has a default port of 3389. Remote Desktop Protocol does allow authorized users to connect remotely to another machine, which brings me to why people like to use RDP. By enabling this protocol, users can remotely connect to their endpoints to work or troubleshoot problems that arise without physically going into the office or wherever their endpoints are located. By doing things remotely, it saves a lot of commute time, makes everything more accessible and convenient. However, with accessibility and convenience comes with risk where attackers would attempt to abuse this protocol as we saw earlier where 90% in ransomware breaches involved in RDP abuse. But you might ask, how exactly does RDP get abused by attackers? And that is a great question. One of the main ways an attacker could gain initial access into an organization's environment is through an exposed RDP service from a server. And this could be a production or development server. Now, by having an exposed RDP service, this would mean that anybody from the internet and connect to that server using RDP, and then attempt to authenticate via brute force, which we've gone over in day 11. Or they could authenticate using a valid account that they had fished once upon a time. Once an attacker is in the environment, depending on the level of access that they have, they could then perform credential dumping to gather valid credentials found on that server, and then use those credentials to move laterally onto other machines within the same network using RDP. Now, by doing this over and over again, the attackers would eventually get one to two steps closer to their actions on objectives, which could be exfiltrating data, deploy ransomware, or both. So now that you have learned a bit about what RDP is, why it's used, and how attackers abuse this protocol, you might be curious on how to find servers that have this protocol exposed to the internet. And I'll show you using two platforms. The first one is using Shodan. The first thing you want to do is head over to Shodan.io and create an account with Shodan. As an FYI, in this video, I will not be doing an in-depth how-to for both of these platforms. If you're interested, do let me know in the comment section down below. Once you've created your account and logged in, under the search bar, you want to type in port colon 3389, which is the default port of remote desktop protocol. I'll go ahead and hit enter and wow. Take a look on the left hand side here. We have about 4.3 million assets with the default port of RDP opened. Now you can go ahead and sift through all of these IP addresses, but please do not try and connect to these servers and begin brute forcing them. That <laughs> is not the play. If you wanted to do something similar, I would highly recommend you spin up your own server and then try brute forcing it. Let's say that your organization uses the IP address of 3.110.148.189. Now you can ask the question like, should this server have RDP exposed? If not, maybe we should disable it or perhaps put it behind a VPN, virtual private network. If we click on the IP itself, we could see here, port 3389 with the remote desktop protocol. And we can see the machine name as well, which is kind of cool. This is named EC2 Amazon 0VQ V041. There is something to note, and just because it is port 3389, it doesn't necessarily mean that RDP is running on that port. For example, if we take a look at some of the products, the top events are coming from RDP, but we also have OpenSSH, Nginx, Hikvision IP camera, and MySQL. And if I scroll down, sometimes, ooh, like this, sometimes you'll be able to see a screenshot. And as we can see, the target name is PC-Andrea. 
Now, Andrea, if for whatever reason you're watching this, close that down. <laughs> Do you need RDP exposed? And if we click into the IP address, let's see here, it's hosting 443 and 3389. Now I am not going to do any OSINT on this particular thing, but it can be an interesting exercise. However, again, I do not encourage you to brute force this or try and connect into this IP address. Don't do anything stupid. The next resource that I like to use when looking for open ports is census. You can head over to census.com and then click on search now. And all we got to do is just type in 3389. And from here, we can begin filtering down even more if we want to. So if we want to look specifically for this particular protocol, we can click on it. And just by searching 3389, we have 4 million labels for remote access. And looking at the service name, we have 3.90 million for RDP. If I click on that, it would automatically update our query and search where the service name is RDP. And we can just rinse and repeat. Let's say, for example, if one of your public IP server is 45.114.127.175, you could ask the question if RDP should be exposed. If not, then close it off or put it behind a VPN. By doing this exercise, you'll be able to identify assets with potentially sensitive services that are exposed to the internet when it shouldn't be. And the more that you are aware of these, the faster you can do something about it, which will overall reduce the risk of potential compromise. And that is what we are trying to aim for. Lastly, if you did find a server that has an exposed service, you can start reviewing your authentication logs to start seeing if anybody had successfully logged in from an unauthorized source. For example, if you never do any business in China or Russia and you see a successful login from either of those countries, that might be something interesting to look at. I'll admit, some organizations, not all, but some are not aware of what services are opened and exposed to the internet until it is too late. With that being said, how does one protect themselves from RDP abuse? I'll leave you with five recommendations in no particular order that I always provide organizations. Number one, turn it off. More often than not, developers enable RDP on their development servers to perform remote administration during their development phase, but then they forget to turn it off once completed. Regularly use Shodan and Census to ensure that you keep track of what services are exposed to the internet. Number two, use multi-factor authentication. If applicable, always use MFA everywhere to provide you an additional layer of security. Your account is going to get compromised eventually. And when it does, you'll be happy that you enabled MFA as an added layer. But don't get me wrong, having MFA is not the end all be all, but it is a good start. Number three, restrict access. Implement firewall rules to restrict access to only allow those within a given IP range to RDP into your servers and or put them behind a VPN. So only those who connect to the organization's VPN can RDP. By doing this step, it will eliminate majority of the internet attempting to scan and brute force their way into your servers. Number four, have better passwords. A quick win is to have better passwords, which are at least 15 plus characters containing upper, lowercase numbers and special characters. Even better if you utilize a privileged access management tool, aka PAM, to provide you with a one-time password. Number five, don't use default accounts. Another quick win is to simply disable the default local accounts that get created. And if required, create another administrator account that is named something completely different. But do note that points four and five will not be as effective against credential stuffing attacks, which again is where an attacker would try to authenticate using credentials found in credential dumps. For example, let's say that I have a personal account called Steven and my account was involved in a third party breach which contained both my username and password. Because I am human, I reused the same password for my work administrator account and I also have access to RDP into servers. Well, an attacker could now grab my leaked credentials and try their luck. Now, there are a lot of additional details that go into this, but you do get the point. To recap, to protect yourself from RDP abuse is to do the following. Turn off the protocol if not in use, use MFA, restrict access, have better passwords, and don't use the default accounts. And there you have it. You now have a better understanding of what RDP is, why it's used, how attackers abuse it, where to look for exposed RDP, and how you can protect yourself from RDP abuse. 
In the next video, I'll go over the RDP logs that our Windows server had generated in the cloud. And I'll also be creating an alert for RDP brute force. As a reminder, I'll be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the My for Sock Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me up for grabs. Details are provided in the description down below. If you're an aspiring stock analyst, I would highly encourage you to participate to level up your practical skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.